Hello, hello. Hello, YouTube community. This is Miss Patty from For Your CNA with your live weekly question and answer session, Thursdays at three. Um, I'm hoping you guys can hear me because it was a new YouTube set up today, um, YouTube interface. So I don't know if you guys, can you just let me know in the chat if you can hear me? Can you guys hear me? Give me a thumbs up. Hello, Cynthia. Yep, you can hear me. Good. Awesome. Awesome. Hi, Caroline. Thanks for joining. I hope you guys are having a fantastic week and staying safe out there. Um, yes. Oh, good. Very good. All right. So um, while we're waiting for everybody to show up, hi, Sophia. Thanks for joining. While we're waiting for you guys to show up, I want to talk about two things that I didn't get to last week. Two questions that came up at the end. Hi, Jennifer. Thanks for joining. So the first thing uh, that I want to get to is Blue Jedi asked toward the end of, of uh, last, um, turn that off, toward the end of last week's session, what can a home health do that a CNA can't do? And the answer to that is nothing. Home health aides um, cannot do uh, anything that a CNA can't do. So the best way for me to explain this is to kind of, oh, Jennifer, you were on vacation. Well, we missed you for sure. I hope you had a fantastic vacation, though. I need one. Um, so let me explain to you what a home health aide is and what a CNA is, because there's a lot of like confusion out there on these two. First of all, home health aides are not certified by the state. Um, most states don't even have a state list of home health aides, a state registry or anything like that. Um, but as far as what they do, you have to remember, we talked a little bit about this last week, the difference between personal care skills and clinical skills. So if you guys remember talking about that last week, Personal care skills is anything you do for yourself on a daily basis. So bathing, that's a personal care skill. Grooming, you know, brushing your hair, arranging your hair, brushing your teeth, uh, putting makeup on if you do that. Those are all grooming tasks, you know, to get yourself presentable for the world, right? That's grooming. Uh, dressing, you guys get get up, get yourselves dressed uh, for whatever activity it is that you're going to be doing. If you're sitting on the couch watching Netflix, you're going to get dressed a little differently than if you were going to work. So um, getting dressed is a personal care task. Eating and uh, making meals are personal care tasks. Getting yourself to wherever it is you need to go. Okay, so to school, to work, to social activities, those are personal care tasks. Toileting is a personal care task. So these are all things you do for yourself every day without even thinking about it, right? So you're you you know you're not in the bathroom brushing your teeth thinking this is a personal care task. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. But all together, we call these ADLs, activities of daily living. So it's things you do for yourself every day. That is what a home health aide will do for patients in a home setting. So a home health aide can help somebody who maybe can't squeeze the toothpaste out any longer because of arthritis, or they can help somebody that just doesn't have the stamina to stand up and make a sandwich. They can help somebody who maybe needs a little help in the shower with washing their back and their feet. They can help somebody who can't get dressed on their own any longer. So all of those ADLs or personal care tasks are things that home health aides can do. Now, home health aides cannot work with catheters, oxygen, dressings of any kind, you know, wound care, anything like that, um, anything nursing related. So anything that you would normally do for yourself. In, in a home setting um, than a home health aide can't do. So if we have a, a patient at home that needs help brushing their teeth, getting showered, getting dressed and eating breakfast, that is perfectly um, acceptable for a home health aide. Now, if that same patient has a catheter, 
that home health aid is no longer the right um, caregiver. Now we need a CNA who can do catheter care. So CNAs do personal care tasks, just like home health aides, but they have an additional level of skill that allows them to help nurses. Now, remember that home setting that we just talked about, right? Person at home, home health aid is helping. People at home, as long as all they need is personal care skills, they're probably not going to change a whole lot. They're not what we call unstable, okay, and in, in that their condition is all over the place, that they need frequent monitoring or vital signs or anything like that. Um, people that need monitoring or vital signs or we think their condition is going to change rapidly, that's when we would have to have a CNA in place because CNAs work with nurses to help monitor conditions, take vital signs, and do those higher level type tasks under the supervision of a nurse. So home health aides can do personal care. CNAs can do personal care plus limited nursing plus observation and reporting. So that's the big difference between the two. Home health aides are only allowed to do personal care. I hope that helps you guys. And then FT asked right as we were signing off last week, and I didn't get to this, and I felt kind of bad about this. Um, FT asked, how do you get started as a CNA in Florida? So just really briefly, I want to cover this. Um, in Florida, you don't have to take a class to be a CNA. All you have to do is take the test. So you don't have to go sit in a classroom anywhere. You don't have to listen to a teacher. You don't have to do anything like that. You just register for the test. You take it. If you pass it, you're a CNA, period. You can go to work anywhere a CNA works. Um, chances of passing that test without some sort of preparation are probably pretty low. You're probably not going to get very far unless you're prepared for the test. And that's kind of what we do. So my resources, I have all the videos online on my website for your CNA.com to get you ready for the test. There's skills videos, there's animated videos, all of that is there. We also have a book that goes with it. Here's the book. This book goes with it. You can order this on my website and that helps. Um, that's kind of me in book form. OK, um, so it helps uh, explain a lot of the, the topics, give you step by step instructions for the skills, supply lists, all of that. So the book and the free um, uh, videos that I have online will help you get ready for that test. Now, if you want to take it a step further, um, we have the online program that has all of my classroom lectures. It has um, interactive activities, it has flashcards, it has quizzes, has all kinds of stuff to make sure that you're ready for the test. And then if you really want to take that extra step, you can come take a class with me in my classroom because I still teach. So there's lots of different ways to get ready for the test in Florida. Um, you can either just watch the videos on yourself and hope for the best. You can watch the videos and buy the book, and that will help you. You can enroll the, in the online program, which is guaranteed to get you where you need to go. Or you can come sit in my classroom, and I'll teach you in person. Um, and we're located uh, in Florida, of course. Now, that's for Florida. It's important that you understand that, because i got people from all over the place now that are, are watching these videos. So that's in Florida. Florida is the only state, the only one where you don't have to take a class to be a CNA. It's the only state that allows challengers. So that's important. In any other state, you have to go through a state approved CNA program to be eligible to test. They won't even let you test unless you've gone through a program. Okay. So Florida is a little different. Florida allows challengers. No other state does. Now our program is purchased by a lot of different CNA programs out there, high schools, colleges, vocational, um, trade schools, uh, job corps, uh, all kinds of uh, hospital systems, nursing homes. There's all kinds of approved CNA programs out there that purchase our materials. And the online course comes with that when they purchase those materials. So they're using our products to teach under their school license. So they have to add some things in it 
into it's not just all my um, topic. They have to, you know, do skills checks off, check offs and lectures and things like that. But my program itself, that online program and book are used by schools all over the country to help prepare the students for the state exam. So we um, we fill a very local role in here in Florida and then we fill a more national role as well. It's set up a little bit differently because the needs are a little bit different. So in order to get started as a CNA in Florida, um, you know, basically just figure out what your uh, needs are. You know, are are you comfortable with just self-preparing with videos? And, you know, we had somebody that just um, put on my comments. Uh, Ricardo was his name. We had, he left me a comment on YouTube this week that all he did was watch my videos and then he challenged the test and passed it. And the evaluators were so impressed. They asked him what school he went to and he said he didn't. He just watched for your CNA videos. So, um, you know, I mean, certainly they'll get you the knowledge that you need. It's not really the whole story. I really suggest that you get a little bit more. Um, you know, like the book or the program, just because that those videos, they're good. They, if, as long as you're parroting what I'm doing, you'll get it. But the problem is that that will get you past the test. Once you get out there and work, it's different. Okay. Because everything is dictated by the care plan for every specific patient. And if you don't truly understand that just by watching my videos, right? If you're not getting the higher level understanding of what we're doing and why we're doing it, then when you get out there in the workforce, you may fall short. So I don't suggest that you just use the videos <laughs> to prepare for the test because there's so much more information. Those videos will probably get you to pass the test, but there's so much more information there that you don't have and you don't know that you're missing, that could really be detrimental in a clinical setting. So I hope that kind of helps clear that up. So let's see who's here. So um, Gloria, hi, Gloria. Sonia, hello. And Jennifer says, I still don't understand how CNAs are able to work in assisted living facilities if it isn't a skilled care clinical care. How do they get their hours through the state that way? Okay, Jennifer, I'll talk about that in just one second. Caroline says, I'm in the process of working independently as a CNA in the home. Do you think I'll have a problem with potential clients trusting my services? Ooh, now that's a good one, Caroline. So let me, um, let me, so let me talk to Jennifer first and then I'll get to you. So Jennifer, remember that um, in an assisted living facility, what we're offering is personal care skills. So it still comes down to that same topic that we've been talking about for two weeks now. Personal care skills. Anybody can do personal care skills. You don't have to have training to know how to brush your teeth because you've been doing it forever. Personal care skills are things you do for yourself every day. So um, resident aides in an assisted living facility don't have to have a class to teach them how to help people brush their teeth. Uh, home health aides in a home care setting don't, you know, I mean, it, it's it's not really regulated, right? So there is a training process you have to go through for home health aid just because you're unsupervised. So in an assisted living facility, they're doing the same job as the home health aid, but they're supervised, right? There's people there. Um, people will know if the resident aide is not doing a good job. So they're supervised. In a home care setting, you're unsupervised. That's a whole point of a home health aid is to go into somebody's home. So because of that, there's a training requirement just to make sure that you understand safety and that you don't steal the patient blind and there's ethics and that kind of thing. So, but still the job is the same, personal care, right? Resident aid, personal care, um, home health aid, personal care. CNA can do personal care as well. We can do that, but we have additional training. now. So I, I need you to understand all three, right? Resident aid, on the job training is fine because you're supervised. Home health aid, uh, you have to go to, you know, get a certificate that, you know, keeps you ethical, but still personal care. CNA learns personal care plus. Now, where you, your, your issue here is if you're a CNA and you're working in that assisted living setting, 
doing personal care? Because we know assisted living does personal care. Does that meet your renewal requirements to be able to renew your CNA certification? And the answer to that will depend on your state. It will also depend on the license that your assisted living facility has. Some assisted living facilities are just that. They're basic daily care, personal care skills only. Some assisted living facilities have a limited nursing services rider, which means that they, they're still an ALF, but they have nurses on hand, they have a plan in place, they have appropriate supervision, and they can take on higher level patients and provide limited nursing services for those individuals. So let's uh, let's say that Charlie um, is an elderly gentleman. He moves into an assisted living facility so that somebody can help him with his laundry and provide meals and scrub his back. You know, so he's a, he's a, an assisted living patient in the truest sense of the word. But Charlie is going to get older, and Charlie's going to need a whole lot more help as he gets older, and he may even need some basic nursing services like uh, a dressing on his foot when he, you know, gets um, a cut on it, or he may need vital signs because now he's got a medication he has to take every day, or whatever the case may be, limited nursing. Well, Charlie doesn't want to have to move out of his assisted living facility. And he doesn't really want to have to pay for a nurse to come in, a home care nurse to come in and see him every, you know, every day or every week or whatever the case may be. So that's where that limited nursing services um, addition can come in. If your ALF is truly just an ALF, it may not meet your renewal needs. You'd have to check with your state board of nursing. If that ALF ha has that limited nursing services, then it will, because now you're operating in the capacity of a CNA, which is what's required to uh, work in home or in uh, continue working in um, nursing assistant. So I hope that that kind of helped a little bit. If you're working in an ALF, you have to find out from your state and from your um, employer whether that's going to meet your renewal needs. So keep that in mind. Um, if it doesn't, just go to work at a home care company, you know, once a month or once every six weeks. Go take on a, a visit here and there, and that will give you what you need to be able to renew in a lot of states. Not all, but a lot. You have to know your own state requirements, and I don't know all 50, so please don't ask me. <laughs> it would meet the needs in Florida. Um, okay, so Caroline, you said that you're in the process of working independently as a CNA do you think I'll have a problem with potential clients trusting my services? So, yes, uh, that is a concern, okay? There's good and bad about working independently as a CNA. The I'm going to start off with the good because that's what most people focus on, right? If, if I'm a CNA and you hire me, then you're going to pay me more than if I was going to an agency because the agency has to get their cut. So if you're working uh, as a CNA independently, you might be making $15 or $20 an hour. That sounds great. If you're working for an agency, you may only be making $12 an hour. That's a lot less. So you know, why? You know, I'd rather work independently. Well, the problem is, and there's a lot of problems here. Number one, remember, a certified nursing assistant, remember nursing, is there to assist a nurse. If you're working independently, you are not assisting a nurse, which means you are now liable, 100%. So you've got to make sure that you have liability insurance. And you have to be willing to accept the risk because if that patient falls and you're the one that's there, that family can sue you and they'll probably win. The second problem is that if you're operating as an independent contractor, you're now responsible for taxes. Now, when you get your paycheck at the end of the week and you see they took taxes out, what most people don't understand, let's say that they took $120 in taxes out of your check right? And you're like, oh man, Uncle Sam's robbing me. They're taking my money. 
Well, what you don't know is that your employer, right? The person that is paying you had to match that. So what was sent to the government is $240 in taxes. You paid 120, your employer pays 120. But when you're an independent contractor, you are now paying the whole thing. So you've got more liability, you have more taxes that are going to be, um, you're, that you're gonna be responsible for. But then there's another issue here that most people don't think about. When you're contracting to go into somebody's home, they need reliable, right? If you're, if you're saying, okay, I'm going to help. I'll come into your home. I'll help you cook, clean. I'll take care of your mom. You know, whatever it is that you're going to be doing. That family or that patient is relying on you. And if your car breaks down, if you get sick, if there's an emergency, it's not as easy as just saying, hey, I can't make it today because you've obligated. Somebody else is relying on you to be there. And if you don't have an agency that you can call up and say, hey, I'm not going to make it today. My car is dead or, you know, I got to go to the hospital or, you know, whatever the case may be. If you can't make it, there's going to be serious uh, consequences the employer, whoever hired you, is probably not going to be very happy. Um, and that can cause a lot of conflict. And now you don't have a buffer. You don't have, there's a lot of hard feelings that can happen. So when you're going through an agency, that agency, although they're, you know, they're, they're not, the agency is making money, right? Because they're, they're a corporation. That's what corporations do. But what they're doing in exchange for that money is taxes, they're um, making sure that the client's needs are met, regardless of your availability. And they're making sure that there's a buffer between the client and the caregiver, because you would be surprised how many times um, issues can come up. And it really is helpful to have that intermediary when there's a problem. I hope that helps. Okay. Okay. So let me, oh, wow, you guys have been busy. Hold on. <laughs> All right. So let's see here. Um, Immaculate, good afternoon. So Jennifer says, also my CNA instructor said that CNAs are hired to work in clinics. I thought those were medical office assistants work in ambulatory care. Yes. Um, yeah. CNAs can work anywhere there's a nurse. It's that simple. It really is that simple. Certified nursing assistants assist nurses, wherever those nurses are. Nurses work in clinics, so CNAs can work in clinics. Nurses work in doctor's offices, so CNAs can work in doctor's offices. Nurses work in home health, so CNAs can work in home health. Nurses work in mental health, so CNAs can work in mental health. CNAs can work anywhere that nurses work because they're nursing assistants. So yeah, absolutely. They can, um, they can certainly work in ambulatory care. Now, Medical assistants are a little bit different. Medical assistants are, okay, so nursing assistants work with nurses, right? That makes sense. Medical assistants work with medical doctors. So a medical assistant is just somebody who has been trained to work in that doctor's office performing certain tasks. They're an assistant, just like a, a CNA. It doesn't, it, it's not, um, they're not always the same skills. So in a doctor's office, you have to know how to make appointments. You have to know how to file things. You have to know how to call in refills. You've got to know how to take vital signs. That's the same. You have to know how to do, um, you know, clerical things. You've got to be able to assist the doctor with certain procedures like earwax irrigations or um, lancing a boil or something. Um, so there's different skills, but those can all be learned on the job. So don't get caught up in the semantics there. Uh, assistants are assistants. The name is just telling who they're assisting. It's not that a CNA cannot work in a nursing or in a doctor's office. They can only work in nursing homes. That's not true. An assistant is an assistant. It, the name just tells who they're assisting. Now, 
medical assistants because they help medical doctors they can't work with nurses, right? That they, they, they aren't trained to be nursing assistants. So CNAs can work in a doctor's office or a clinic or anywhere like that, but medical assistants can only work in medical offices. So there's not as much overlap there, um, which is somewhat interesting. Okay, so let's say, Shirley, hello. Jane Chupp says, can you able to explain indirect or beginning skills, please? Okay, so I think you're asking about indirect care. Um, indirect care is how you treat the patient. It's quite, it, it really is that simple. So it's things like tone of voice, um, explaining things to the patient, your facial expression. Are you smiling? Do you make eye contact? It also has to do with your posture. Are you facing the patient when you're talking to them? Um, indirect care is just all of the things that people would kind of, when I demonstrate it in, in class, I, I demonstrate two different CNAs. OK, CNA one is CNA two. And then I ask the students, which CNA would you want? And then I ask them why. And they all say, well, because CNA two was nicer. And but there's a lot of things that goes into nicer. So all of those qualities, all of those traits are indirect care. And you're going to be graded on it for the state exam. Uh, pa Joseph says, can CNA in Asia work in the USA? You have to get certified in every state that you want to work in. So if you're a CNA in Asia and you come to the United States, whatever state you're coming to, you would have to meet their requirements to get certified in that state. So if you uh, move to New York, they may have an opportunity for you to be able to um, sit for the test in New York to get certified. Other states may require that you go through their entire training process as well, because it's hard. Not all training um, courses are the same. So because CNA is relatively short course, they usually require in a lot of states that you just go take the course to be a CNA in whatever state you're you're coming to uh, if you're coming from out of the country so let's see here cindy hi i am fantastic i hope you are too melissa good day uh jennifer says yeah oregon has cna2 level certification my instructor said those cnas can work in clinics yeah some states have a cna1 and a cna2 all that means is an extra layer of skills that you've learned that's it there is nothing big, mystical, magical about it. It just means you have a few more skills under your belt. Um, let's see here. Oh, Fred, you're FT. Hi, Fred. <laughs> Melissa uh, says, yes. Pat says, hi, Miss Patty. Where in Florida do you teach classes? Spring Hill, Florida. Um, it's on the west coast of Florida, uh, just above St. Pete. So if you find St. Pete on the map, go up the coast. And that's where Florida, or that's where Spring Hill is in Florida. Jackie says, hi, I'm in New York. I do my exams on the 24th of the month. Wish me luck. I do. Oh, I wish you luck. I graduated from CNA classes and I'm studying. Oh, well, congratulations, Jackie. I'm super excited for you. Katie says, hi, I'm about to start my CNA classes this month in New York. I'm a little iffy of the school I signed up with because the program is only two and a half weeks. Is this time frame normal for the program? Yeah, it's okay. You can learn everything you need to learn in two and a half weeks. Yes. Um, my program is four weeks long, but we only meet two days a week. So yeah, I think that you can safely learn everything you need to learn in that time frame. You will have to study though. There is some stuff in there that you're going to have to do, but I think you'll be okay. Jennifer says, got it. Thank you. Oh, good. I'm so happy. Uh, it sounds like it's dependent on the level of care of the assistant living facility provides. Yes, absolutely. You do have it. Uh, oh, and I wanted to say I've accepted a CNA position in the maternity ward floor of my local hospital. I'm excited. Oh, that's great. That's so exciting. Um, a friend of mine, uh, when she graduated from RN school, she became a labor and delivery uh, nurse in RN. And um, I did not. I 
have been in labor and delivery as a nurse in my training, and it's not for me. I am not a good labor and delivery nurse. She loved it. That was her ideal place to be. And she went on to become a NICU RN. Um, and she absolutely loves that. That's not my specialty. So you will find your own kind of where you belong in nursing. There's so many opportunities. And if you go into my website about halfway down the first page, you'll see a quiz there, a personality quiz that will help you identify based on your personality traits where you might belong in healthcare. And that might be um, interesting for you as well. So Jackie says, hi, Katie, my program was about that time. It was very, very good, but you have to do studying on your own too. Yes, that is correct. I graduated in June and didn't get my state exams until August 24th. Well, thank you, Jackie, for giving her that um, vote of encouragement. That's awesome. And let's see here. Karen says, hola, hola. How are you? Tomorrow's my big day, test day. So nervous. Oh, I'm so excited for you. Take a deep breath. Remember to focus on the patient. The test is all about the patient. It's not about you at all. It's about the patient. Read that care plan as many times as you need to. Make sure you're following that care plan exactly. Okay? Don't deviate from the care plan. If the care plan says to perform range of motion on the right shoulder, only do the exercises indicated on the right shoulder. Make sure you follow that care plan to the T. If you do and you focus on the patient, you'll do perfect. I have faith in you. Okay, so Melissa says, hi, my question is, am I, where am I recognized in private home or hospital? I'm not sure, Melissa, I'm, if you can give me a little more clarification on that, I'm not sure what it is that you're asking. Um, kind of let me know, phrase it a little bit different for me, if you would. Uh, let's see here. Henry, hi. Cindy says there are agencies that do hire CNAs and independent contractors. The agencies accept the cases, but they're not liable for anything. Many agencies have the system. And I, yes, Cindy, that is correct. Um, if you're working as an independent contractor, proceed with caution because you're going to be responsible for the, They're an intermediary. Um, they're going to get the cases. They do all the advertising and things like that. Um, and they will do some mediation and they will, if you're not able to go to work, they will make sure that, you know, someone else is, you know, covering that, but proceed with caution as an independent contractor, as a CNA. There's, uh, there are some, there's some good things, but some not good things that could happen from that. Um, so let's see here. Uh, Cynthia says best wishes on your test. And uh, Katie says, thank you. Good to know. Caroline says, thank you for your advice. I know it won't be easy to work independently, but I'm up for the challenge. Awesome. And Jennifer says, see, I'd rather deal with babies than the elderly. <laughs> yeah, um, it wasn't the babies. I love babies. Man, I'll cuddle a baby all day long. No problem. It wasn't the babies. For me, I have I it's it's difficult for me to deal with a lot of young women that are very needy and dramatic and divas. <laughs> and we all turn into I had I had babies and I was a diva then too. Um, so we all turn into divas when we're giving birth, and it just really wasn't a good fit for me. And then it was so funny because during my nur my nursing training, when I was doing my uh, maternity rotation, we had, now this is all within a, maybe a three or four week period, okay? So we had the Hatfields and McCoys, so two families that could not be in the hospital at the same time. So we were running interference, you know, the mama's family and the daddy's family did not get along at all. So we had to, you know, coordinate to make sure there wasn't a fight in the hallway. We had two baby daddies show up at the same time. They both thought they were the daddy of the baby. We had uh, a couple that um, was very abusive <laughs> and 
uh, we knew that the, the it was just a, a horrible situation. And, and, you know, they're the parents and, you know, they're, they're knocking each other out and uh, you have to release the baby to them because um, it's their baby. Uh, and that's, that was a very difficult thing. And then we also had three drug addicted newborns and that was all within like a four week period. And that's when I decided that, man, I will take ICU any day of the week. Give me the stabbings, the shootings, the heart attacks, the drownings, Give me something that I can concrete focus on. I'm a high energy individual. I'm a problem solver. And uh, it just was way too much drama for me. Now, if you're into drama, if that's your thing, then the, the mother baby unit is a, an awesome place to work. <laughs> it really is. And like I said, a very good friend of mine, she excelled at it and was great. Just not really my cup of tea. I like the elderly. Um so Jill says, I know this may vary the different places, but are CNA classes offered year round or do they have certain month that they start? No, most, most places now. Okay. It depends. If you're going through CNA classes in a college, then they're going to start at the beginning of the semester. If you're going through CNA classes at a vocational school, they usually, usually will be offered on a set schedule. If you're going to, to classes at a private vocational center, you know, like a small school, they're usually offered year round. So it really depends on where you're looking to go to school. Um, let's see here. Jackie says, I do have a very soft spot for elderly people. Yes, I do too. Um, Karen says that was drama. Yes, it was drama. And I am not drama minded at all. Um, let's see. Levine says I've had my CNA license in Alabama, worked at the veterans hospital for six months, but I left and haven't been working for the last 23 years. Oh, wow. How do I get back into CNA? Um, just, you're going to have to take another class in Alabama specifically. You're going to have to take a class and get recertified, but I'm sure that you won't have any trouble at all finding a job. Um, and right now it's, this is actually a good time to do this. If you contact any of the local nursing homes in your area and ask about the temporary nursing assistant program, this program was put in place during COVID because a lot of schools had to shut down. They couldn't uh, train CNAs and we just, we had a CNA shortage. Um, so a temporary nursing assistant program was put into place that allows you to work in an, uh, uh, nursing home. They have to provide training, but allows you to work in a nursing home for a certain number of months before you get certified. And it actually takes the place of classroom training. So it's kind of a way of getting around the cost of classroom training. Um, so this is a really good time to maybe explore that option. So uh, Rosemond, hi, thanks for joining us again. And Life with Lex says, I just received my license three weeks ago in New York City. How many months of experience will I need before I can be a travel CNA? All right, Lex, um, or Life with Lex, sorry. Uh, you really, honestly, if you want my honest opinion, you really need at least a year. Um, some travel agencies may not have that requirement. And I know that travel uh, is very, very popular and very lucrative. I mean, people are getting $25, $30 an hour as travel staff, as travel CNAs. The problem is, and it is a big problem, when you're brand new, you're not as quick as you should be. Um, because your brain, it's, it, it's perfectly okay, you're new. This is the one time you're not allowed, you know, not supposed to be quick, right? It's okay. But the problem is that with agency, you are literally being farmed out to the highest bidder. So you're going to be going to places that are horrifically short staffed or places that maybe are on the lower socioeconomic end of the spectrum and they don't have supplies or um, places that just can't keep staff because the morale is so low. And when you go in, everybody is just fighting and backbiting and no one wants to help anybody. So when you're working as an agency or travel, it can be super, super hard. You're earning that money. 
And if you aren't really good at your skill level, if you aren't really confident and comfortable, you'll drown. And it, it what ends up happening is that people that jump into agency or travel right away, they end up getting out of medicine completely because it's just so, so hard and so totally overwhelming. And so so they just they, they give up. And now we've lost a valuable team member that we really, really needed. So my suggestion to you is don't jump in feet first right away. Take the time you need to get comfortable in your own skill set, to understand how everything works, to develop your own routines, and then look at maybe getting into travel or agency. I hope that helps. Okay. So Rosemond says, last Wednesday, I took the test and passed. Thank you so much. Oh, that's awesome. Awesome, Rosemond. I'm so proud of you. Congratulations. So let's get to who we need to congratulate this week. So these are the people that passed and came by and told us on our YouTube channel that they passed this week. So let's send them out a congratulations. So uh, Sierra Malone passed the CNA state exam this week. Woohoo! Congratulations. Bianca Taylor passed. Layla Lazaro stopped by and let us know that she passed as well. Yeezy also passed. So congratulations. And Ricardo Rodriguez, who I told you about earlier, also passed. And he simply watched the videos, challenged the test and was successful. So congratulations. We're super proud of all of you and welcome to healthcare. So the people that I know are wait, are waiting on results or we're waiting to hear how they did. They came by and said, I'm testing this week, but we haven't heard. So if you know any of these people, tell them to come let us know how they did. So Zeslop tested last week and we're dying to know how'd it go. Hannah P Pickering, Carly Lundquist, and Yoladania Vasquez. Yoladania Vasquez. I hope I said that right. All tested on Tuesday and we have no idea how they did. So we're hoping for the best. We're keeping our fingers crossed. Good thoughts out to the universe. And if you know any of them, poke them and tell them to come tell us how, how they did because we're dying to know. Um, so that'll wrap up this week. I'm super happy that all of you guys joined us and I'm proud of every single one of you. You guys are who's giving healthcare a great name. So keep it up. You guys are doing awesome. And uh, if you've got any questions, make sure you let us know. I'll be here same time next week, Thursday at three. Uh, you can catch me on my YouTube channel. I always put it up there for replay for those that can't join us at this time. And uh, I'm super excited to do this every week with you guys. I've got some new things that I'm working on. I'll let you know about as they come up. Uh, stay tuned because I got some exciting things that might be coming. And um, we'll see what we can work out. So until next time, guys, happy caregiving.